the work CRISPR-Cas9 has surpassed, uh, in a way, the, the frontier of knowledge uh, through really showing uh, a work done on, on really basic research work done on, on bacteria that has led to a, a transformative uh, genetic uh, engineering uh, technology uh, that allows to to modify DNA and the expression of, of DNA in an unprecedented manner because it's a ve very versatile technology uh, that can be applied uh, to the modification of, of genomes and their expression in a, in a large panel of cells and organisms. CRISPR-Cas9 has a, has a very versatile and, and powerful uh, genome engineering technology, has really a lot of, of implications and positive implications in the field of, of life sciences in general. And so the agriculture field, uh, the biomedical field, the research and development field. So, so it, it, it's really uh, helping, for example, in medicine, uh, the finding new targets for, for therapeutics, understanding really uh, the, the, the basic fundamentals of, 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 uh, of diseases. It allows to, to uh, generate um, animal models that are useful to, to understand better uh, the diseases in a, in a more close to the clinical situation and, and can also allow to use those animal models to uh, to test uh, therapeutics under development and uh, with one of, of the challenges to develop CRISPR-Cas9 as a direct medicine uh, to, to treat uh, severe human genetic disorders. So this is uh, an, an example at least of, of the broad applications of, of the technology in the field of biomedicine. And in the field of agriculture, for example, it's to really improve the production of, of plant crops in a, in a very um, precise manner and also allowing to really reconsider the way uh, uh, we, uh, we, we really think of, of, uh, of production of plant crops in the future. It's very worrying when uh, when there is a, a reporting that, that can uh, uh, challenge uh, issues which uh, everyone knows are, are real issues. Um, so a way to circumvent it, it's really to, yeah, to continue uh, research and, and prove those people who, who, uh, who do not believe in climate change or, or do not believe in, in the need of vaccine development to, to really prove them wrong and, and, and show that uh, there are means to believe that these are, in any case, real issues and that they have to be uh, tackled uh, in uh, more in an emergency manner and in, and in a very uh, um, yeah, serious, serious way by, by increasing, for example, also the, the awareness of, of these issues in the media and, and by increasing uh, the, the funding that, uh, that uh, allows to to continue um, uh, to focus on basic science and allowing uh, young scientists to, to really uh, continue in this field. The main motivation for me to be a scientist was curiosity, uh, the, the possibility to, to increase knowledge in a certain field of, of science that was uh, of interest to me. So it's, uh, as I started with my interest in medical microbiology and, uh, and along the way in my career I've always been interested in, uh, in basic science uh, that uh, could lead to, uh, to uh, the, the, the possibility of discoveries uh, helping uh, the field of, of biomedicine principally but also life sciences in general. So it's really the curiosity that has been the driving force for me. Uh, the possibility to ask new questions and, uh, and surely, uh, um, let's put it that way, the, the, the fact that I, I always, <laughs> always liked very much uh, uh, doing science, uh, from starting from a master's student to now when I'm uh, leading a team, 
uh, for the young generation, I would like to to really uh, tell those uh, who are who feel that they have an interest in in in, in science to to take the chance to to really uh, pursue uh, uh, their interest and not ask themselves too many questions as long as uh, they like what they are doing. Uh, that uh, at least my experience has been that you, you never know what can happen to you <laughs> in the years to come and that um, in, in principle one has to be open and uh, be sure that uh, there is always a way in the, in the system to to continue uh, science long term and to be, uh, yeah, to, to, to follow their gut feeling, their enthusiasm and, uh, and the fact that uh, it's, it's really a luxury actually I think to, to be a scientist uh, even though uh, one has to go through certain hurdles but at the end of the day it's, uh, it's really a, a luxury and it can be extremely rewarding uh, at different levels also to develop uh, a certain personality. A specific interest of mine in, in uh, surpassing the frontier of knowledge in science is really in the field of infectious diseases. So really acquiring more knowledge uh, that would allow really to, to understand uh, the, the, the mechanisms behind uh, at least uh, uh, one of my interests is really bacterial diseases and to have means to, to uh, develop research that can lead uh, to uh, new therapeutics uh, specifically in the context of treating uh, infections caused by uh, clinical bacterial isolates that are multi-resistant to antibiotics.